And for the latest on COVID travel safety, let's bring in ABC News contributor Dr. John Brownstein. Dr. Brownstein, good morning. I hope you had a nice and safe Thanksgiving. You know, if people did travel for the holiday, what's the proper protocol for them to follow now? Yeah, good morning, Diane. I mean, yes, of course, we saw record numbers of Americans leaving every airport in the country and probably carrying virus with them. It's really concerning. And as usual, we have a lot of concern about testing. People don't recognize that a test right after an exposure would not yield a useful result. You know, if you gathered with people on Thanksgiving, today would be a day that you could get a test. But if you were traveling yesterday, you need to wait another four days, you know, say Thursday, to get a test result that you think you can rely on. And so that's a lot of confusion right now because people are now clamoring to get in lines for testing to absolve them of risk. And that's going to be a challenge. And, and of course, on top of that, we're seeing massive lines and, and capacity issues with testing. So if you can't get a test, again, it's all about quarantining. CDC is likely changing its guidelines to about seven to 10 days. So that's really what you should be aiming for. And on top of that, you know, every state is, is dealing with the surge in a slightly different way. So really recommend everybody go to their public health department website, see what the recommendation is, and really really try to adhere to those guidelines. If we're going to get past this Thanksgiving surge, that's what we got to do right now. Well, and you mentioned the Thanksgiving surge. You know, yesterday, Dr. Fauci said to expect a, quote, surge upon surge in cases, uh, thanks in large part to Thanksgiving gatherings and, and travel that we mentioned. So how are healthcare workers preparing for this? And do you think the system in general is prepared? Yeah, I mean, no system is prepared for this level of numbers of hospitalizations. I mean, we're hitting record levels on a daily basis now, over 93,000. We have 18,000 people in ICUs right now, and we're just seeing a steady increase. And now you layer in Thanksgiving infection. Our system is just not designed to handle this influx, and that means that many health systems are going to be on the brink of collapse. And that means, of course, people will, will unfortunately die from this virus. I mean, in our state, in Massachusetts, we're meeting with the state, we're forecasting hospitalizations. And if we start to get to a level where we don't have excess capacity, that means that elective procedures are going to start or start to be canceled again. And that becomes the secondary impact of this pandemic. It's not just even about COVID itself, but access to care more broadly. And again, that means we'll see this increase in mortality that we all want to avoid. And let's talk about this Moderna news, a little bright side for us, yes. right? Moderna is now the second drug maker to submit its vaccine for FDA emergency use authorization. Uh, so what do we know about the timing of approval and distribution, who might get this first, and how does this work in tandem with what's happening with Pfizer and their vaccine? Yeah. So, I mean, these results do represent the culmination of probably one of the, the most amazing scientific achievements. But of course, all the science in the world isn't going to make a difference if we can't get those vaccines to people. The FDA has its meeting about the Pfizer vaccine on December 10th, and then December 17th will be Moderna. And it'll take a few days to get that approval from there. The CDC's uh, Committee on Immunization Practices is meeting this week to think about priority groups, right? The, the healthcare workers, frontline responders, the essential workers, vulnerable populations, all that needs to be worked out. Operation Warp Speed is going to distribute the vaccines to the states. Each state has its different plans. Many of these states have designated large hospital systems to be sort of the main place where those first vaccines are going to be done, uh, given out. Uh, but it's all about coordination, the hospitals, the pharmacies, the suppliers of dry ice, of gloves, vials, UPS, FedEx. It is a monumental task. I think that preparations are well underway, and I think we should be confident that vaccines will get to people, but there are limitations, cold storage, supply chain, availability of doses. We can't uh, minimize this issue of cold storage for the Pfizer vaccine. Luckily, Moderna has less of those issues with deep freezing, so that's great. Uh, but then the other layer of complexity is this two-dose regimen, right? That doubles the logistical challenges if every single person has to get two doses within a few weeks. So again, a monumental challenge on top of incredible scientific achievement. All right, so we will keep our expectations tempered and more importantly, keep our safety protocols high. Exactly. All right, thank Dr. You. Brownstein, thank you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.